Thank you again, Father, for this time and opportunity to speak your word, to encourage and strengthen the saints of God throughout the world. As the internet goes throughout all the world, I thank you for this uh, small outreach. Despise not the day of small things. Thank you, Father. Bless you, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name forever. Glory be to God. Thy kingdom come. And thy will be done, Father. In this message, and uh, I just pray and believe that you'll continue to fill my mouth with your words like you promised me you would do. You said, open thy mouth wide and I will fill it with words of truth backed up by the spirit of holiness and sobriety. Praise God. The name of this message, Grace for Obedience. Praise God. I remember when God gave me that revelation last week. Grace was given for obedience. Never seen a scripture like that in the Bible. Have anybody seen a scripture like that in the Bible? That God's given His grace for obedience? Nah, these people out here today, these people, these preachers are preaching. They're turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. Frustrating the grace of God. Receiving the grace of God in vain. Failing of the grace of God. You don't hear anybody talk about that. And then uh, somebody texted me again yesterday. Now I'm reminding you that you only seen on, on the Truth Blaster, which is the Holy Ghost time bomb weapon of the Lord Jesus the Christ. The Holy Ghost time bomb. The Truth Blaster. Blasting the truth into all the earth. The Holy Ghost time bomb. Mr. T. Time bomb begins with a T, capital T. But it is the Holy Ghost time bomb, the weapon of truth in the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise your name, Jesus. Anyway, somebody, like I said, text me about old Ralph, Brother Stair, Brother Ralph, whatever you want to call him. How he was uh, made mention again about the truth blaster. Although he went and made mention it by name, saying how we're using his name on all our videos. It's all over the place or whatever. His name, Brother Stair or Ralph, has been used in seven, I believe it was seven, messages out of 150. 151 or two. But yeah, that's really using his name. No, I'm doing what God has purposed in my heart to do. Just like I said about grace for obedience. And I'm going to go into that. But as I said before, and was hoping that it would be the last time, this will be the final word about the things being done at the Overcomer Ministry. And then the judgment will rest in the hand of the Lord Almighty God Himself. Now I'm going to play some excerpts again from Brother Kirk. Profound word of God that God spoke through Brother Kirk Higby by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the sobriety of grace. Now listen to this, listen to this one. I'm going to play them here in a row, make some comments, and then I'm going to go on with grace for obedience. For the male or female, they will burn in hell. There's nothing anybody can do to change that. You're fool yourself and deceived if you think you can change it. You're going to damn your own soul. That's the truth. God's not going to change His Word. He's not going to do it. And this world is filling, filling, filling. Filling every day more and more. Are falling away. There shall be a great falling away. Falling away from what? The grace of God. That's it. It's the people. It's talking about those that will be twice dead. Turning it into lasciviousness. Deceitful, man. Why? Because they know God. Deceitful. They know the ways of God. They know how to deceive God's people. They know how to work miracles. They know how to minister the gifts. They know these things. They know God, the Bible says. But they deny Him in their works, but they have no Him. And they're dangerous. 
That's and why people believe. can't believe what Dangerous. God's word says, because they That's see right. that kind of stuff. That's right. They think, well, it must be all right. They're still praying. Listen to that again. But they have known him. And they're dangerous. And that's why people can't believe what God's word says, because they see that kind of stuff. They think, well, it must be all right. They're still praying. They lift up their hands and they worship a little bit. They holler and whoop in a little bit. They rejoice a little They must be all right. Nah, there ain't no fruit. They're dead. They're twice plucked. talks about if we deny him if we deny him he also what what is actually happening the, the men that are around today that are living licentious of a godly lifestyle they're still oh, i don't watch it one time i watch the man i'm godly lifestyle i mean just right on down just like old ralph brother stare been doing for years he said he's years. holding the truth and the right with the adultery and fornication and, and sexual perversions the truth but I'm because lying. I'm speaking lies now, people. Doing. Believe the word of God. That's right. Whatever Believe the word of God. Do it. But just don't do after their work. That's it. Don't do after their work. It's getting a lot of people. Here it is, now. Reach out the word of God because of what they see people living. I don't care how. For you hear that? Let me play that again. Believe the word of God, whatever they bid you, do it. But just don't do after their work. You see what the devil's doing? He's getting a lot of people to actually reject the word of God because of what they see people living. I don't care how a person that they speak true, they speak What they see people living. Believe the truth. Believe to the word of God. That's Obey it, people. The word of the Lord. Like Brother Burgess. Walk. Stick to the word, Give people. Don't be sticking to it. This failing of the grace of God. Amen. And I'm talking about, and Jesus identified the scribes and Pharisees as fool. I'm telling you, it's a reprobate spirit. A reprobate spirit. Revilers will not inherit the king. He said, and such were some of you. He said, you were that. He says, but now you're a new Thank you, Father. Of Christ. And we can walk See, in the newness new, of the Spirit of Christ. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. Let me go on to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Praise God. See, because they was teaching in Corinthians that you could do this kind of thing. Yes, they were. They was teaching that. Come on, man. They had a man in their land with his own mother, his own husband's wife. He said, and you, 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 you don't mourn. You, you, you boast and you glory in the thing. They're saying, hey, have you heard about what Joe did? Murmur about, talk about, amen, gossip about. Yet they, nobody judged it. Nobody judged it. Yeah, well, i have done that for years when I was at the Overcomer. He even confronted us there about his penis pills that he was getting through the mail. It had no effect. It wasn't going to stop the lust that was driving the man. For a sexual perversion. Here's, a, here's something that a uh, man of God had had talked about over 40 years ago. It seems the church at Corinth was adopting the attitude of some ministers today. They showed compassion on this fornicator by condoning and approving his sin. Paul sternly commanded by the authority of Jesus Christ to put this evil doer out of the church. But you see, that can't happen there on the farm because uh, Brother Stern is the uh, authority there. So what would happen is you had to do the reverse. The people had to leave away from that abominable, abominable lifestyle of sexual perversion that's been perpetrated throughout the years. Just like Brother Stan, I'm going to play an excerpt of his own mouth, his own words, how he had spoken. For years I have made excuses and provisions, or for years I have lied. That's what an excuse is, a lie. They began to make excuse. Let's go on here with Brother Kirk. And they all just thought, hey, old Joe's gonna just make old it on in. Sarah gonna make it on in. Gonna cruise on down the line. Yeah. I'm Apostle Paul said, hey man, anybody do these things, I don't care what they say, the Apostle Paul said, they're not gonna enter God's kingdom. 
It's just that clear. All right. Matter of fact, it got to be First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse one through three. It got to be now. I mean, they're filled with the spirit's gifts. There was healing. There was tongue talking. And everything fire, else going on down the line. God there was said. prophecy and like all things it, down. Got to be to where it was just like. Stop I mean, to think that Apostle Paul would even. To, you Bro, don't I'm understand how bad to think yeah, he would have to make God. a statement like this. First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse one through three. This is what he says. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Do you know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led? Wherefore I give you to understand. In other words, I want you to understand something. No man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse. I mean, in the Corinthian churches, there were people going around cursing Jesus and saying they was doing it by the Holy Ghost. That's like people today saying they're having sex with certain people because of the Holy Ghost is showing them which ones to have sex with and which ones not to. What a perversion. They are telling Jesus is a curse. There it is right here, people. I hope you all are listening to these words by the Holy Spirit and how they're applied to this present time. And the Apostle Paul finally said, I don't care what calling they say they got, whether they call themselves anything, prophet, apostles, let them acknowledge that this is the commandment of God. No such thing they are not going to enter. It's not right. No man does it. Cause Jesus to curse by the Spirit of God. It's the carnal man. Amen. It's not right before God. But they actually were letting it kind of just think about it and say, hey, man, must be all right. I mean, man's under the unction of the Spirit. No possible. Apostolic authority. You know, he might have been a little old man. Amen. See, but he had authority. Here's the last excerpt. For beloved, Kurt. remember ye the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, beloved, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. Then we've seen that. Spiritually, he'll be quite dead, plucked up by the roots. But the thing about it, God will never, never, never. problem with judgment because that's what God is going to have me do here bringing this perversion to judgment again and then it's going to rest in the hands of God with the scripture that he gave me actually right before I came on to talk you know just uh, I just thank God like he, the scripture gave me on grace for obedience it's amazing how God dropped it in my heart and then he showed me the scripture yesterday on what he had put in my heart. Didn't even know it was in the Bible. Thank you, Father. But I'm going to play this. You know, it's just like, uh, uh, listen to this excerpt again because of the lies that Brother Stair has, has, has had to tell about a sexual perversion over the years. Over the years? Over the years. I would make some judgment, but I would, I would make excuses. Or you make provision. That's exactly what he did. Made excuses or lies. And provisions or lies for what he was doing all these years. But I can tell you one thing. He certainly has abused and misused his authority. Not only physically, but spiritually. With the men and women. At the Overcomer. Amen. Listen to this. His own it word. is a 
proper administration of authority that makes it effective. Amen. It's what is misused or abused that destroys its power. But well, what a statement. What a statement. When it's misused or abused, it destroys its power. And that's exactly what Brother Stern has done with his authority by pushing himself on women all these years. Making all kinds of sexual advances upon every woman. You know, it's amazing how the, how the, uh, the uh, lawyers even for Brother Stair couldn't find one woman. They asked the brothers there, was there any woman that, that left here that he didn't try to advance a sexual agenda on? They couldn't come up with one. That is amazing in itself. What a testimony, huh? The scripture says, neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Now, I admonish you, saints, and encourage you there at the river, the sisters, Daisy, Jenna, Anna, Julia, and the brothers, keep thyselves pure like you have been and how you have backed away from the sexual perversion and advancements that Brother Stewart is trying to pull on you and, and the lies that he says how the women were coming to him. No, he always pushed himself on the women. I can go into more detail about that, but I don't need to. It's a bunch. Of, it's an abomination in the sight of God. Period. But like I said, this is going to judgment at this time. It's just like I said about the people that left. Hear ye the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified. But he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. Was there any ashamed? You know, committed adultery. It says, he that committeth adultery destroys his own soul and those around him that give in to that abomination. It says, a wound and dishonor shall he get and his disgrace or his shame, reproach shall not be wiped away. I told you, I experienced that with adultery and the shame is still there today even though my sins have been forgiven and cleansed from that unrighteousness and unholiness. But the, the reproach and the shame, the disgrace, not grace, the disgrace of adultery shall not be wiped away. But like I said, that's why, you know, it said in their Corinthians about how they, they condoned and approved of the sin, but they wouldn't put that fornicator out. And that's like God showed me that scripture in Isaiah. He will remove the righteous and the merciful before the evil to come. And then there's another scripture. Uh, I'll just go to this one before I go to the final word on this judgment from the Almighty. I just want to give you another scripture. The Lord really showed me another one here the other day about the situation going on there at the farm. Depart ye, depart ye. Go out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. That's what the saints at the river did. Go out ye of the mist of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. Thank you, Father. For you shall not go out with haste, nor go out by flight. For the Lord will go before you. And the God of Israel will be your re reward. So be encouraged, saints, that left the farm. Especially in this last episode in Exodus just like the Exodus of Moses went out from Pharaoh but this is even more devastating because spiritual leaders walking in their own lust and perversions just like I had mentioned about that scripture and I'll get to the last scripture here Like I said, be not a partaker of other men's sins, but keep thyself pure. And I'm, I pray continually that the, the virgins of Zion down at the river will continue to keep themselves pure, and the brothers will keep themselves pure and in the love of God. The prison house letter, 2002, that was mocked by Brother Stair. God is the one that put him in prison because of his sin, not because somebody was lying on him. Go and sin no more or less the worst thing happen unto you. I warn all. The door of grace will soon be closed. But he's mocked that over the years because he 
There's no fear of God. I can tell you that much. You don't commit adultery or any sin in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, period. To be in sin or to have sin in you at that time would be too late. You talk about mocking God. Your love is waxed cold. Ask me, I should know. And his love, his love for God is still waxed cold. You don't commit adultery or any sin and blatantly do it and continue to in sin that grace me abound or mock God. With the love of God in your heart. Period. I ain't going to go on with that letter because it kind of gets me agitated when I look at it. The words that he spoke and how he mocked them all these years. He made excuses. But I'm going to pray a prayer right now. I pray, Sister Natasha Lear, I pray that the Almighty God, Jesus the Christ Himself, will give you the strength the courage, the boldness to be a testimony and a witness of truth and holiness against the perversions of the sexual assault and perversion that Brother Stair tried to put upon you. Period. I pray in Jesus' name. That God will strengthen you in this matter. Which he already has by even putting out a, a message like you did right at the beginning. So the first time I seen it, I said, man, what boldness from God to help this young sister. Because that's going to stop that kind of perversion that Brother Stair has been doing for years. Like I mentioned, even his own daughter one time mentioned how he's destroyed the minds of the young people, the young children. And like I've, man, I could have mentioned it about that about the uh, what he used to do with the camera he knows what he used to do with the camera with the perversion that was going on on the camera and then given to young girls so they could see it here's the scripture God gave me in this judgment here and I'm, this judgment is going to rest in the hands of almighty God period I will come near to you to judgment and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers. I, that's what I pray that Natasha Lear is a swift witness. Against the adulterers. Against false swearers. That's, been, that's why I don't even listen to Brother Stair because he, he's been swearing falsely about women coming after him and all this. What a bunch of nonsense. And against those that oppress the hireling and his wages, the widow, the fatherless, and turn aside the stranger from his right. The right to serve God in holiness and truth. The right to serve God with a pure heart. And turn aside the stranger from his right and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. And that's exactly what I said. There is no fear of God. When you com continue to commit the abominations that old Ralph Stair has been committing for years. So like I said, I leave it in the hands of God. In this final judgment. And the Lord promised me. He will deal with the lies and the adultery abominations. Period. You know, God is a God of truth. And He also is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. I thank Him for that because He dropped that scripture in my heart the other day. And He has been rewarding me for diligently seeking Him about grace, obedience, Hey, the way of the transgressor is hard. Is your way hard today, saints? Then you've been transgressing in some way, shape, or form. Anytime there's something that appears to be hard in any shape or form in anything, I always seek God. Saying, what, am I transgressing somewhere, Lord? Help me, Father, to acknowledge the truth, which is after godliness and hope of eternal life, that God which cannot lie has promised us from the foundation of the world to acknowledge the truth. Not deny it. Not twist it. Pervert it. Like Jesus had to go up to, couldn't go to heaven until he talked to Peter. That's a lie because Jesus said, Touch me not, for I must ascend to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. He told Mary, right after the resurrection, Touch me not, I must ascend. Go tell my brethren to meet me in Galilee. 
few minutes later, they were touching him by his feet and held him by his feet. So what did he do? He had to, he didn't lie and say he's going to go up to his father, touch me not. And then all of a sudden they were touching him. He already made the trip up to heaven and came back. When he went to sit down on the father's right hand, he seen Peter before that. When he ascended up and the cloud received him out of their sight. But anyway, saints, forgetting those things that are behind or putting them behind us, and there's more scriptural perversions than that that I've heard taught over the years. I mean, really, twisting the word of God, changing it completely. But I don't need to go into that because it's not, it's neither here nor there. God knows. God knows if you try to change his word. His word of God is settled forever. They're pure words. As silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times, thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt, thou shalt keep them, thou shalt preserve them, and keep them from this generation forever. When the vilest man is exalted on every side. Now, going into the part about grace. Because this is profound, saints. Grace has been given to us for obedience. For obedience is better than sacrifice. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for a repent of me that I have made them. But Noah, the first man ever, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. How did he do it? By grace. Grace taught Noah to live righteously, soberly, and godly, to deny ungodliness and the worldly lust that were around him in the time of the flood. And God's grace was sufficient, wasn't it? Because God said, I see Noah just and perfect. Why? Because grace is what taught Noah to be obedient, and obedience is better than any sacrifice. The Lord said unto Noah, Come thou in thy house into the ark, for I have thee have I seen righteous. Before me in this generation, the Lord looked down through his eyes and he said, I have seen you righteous. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did all according to unto all that the Lord commanded him. How? By grace. Grace was given to Noah for obedience. Anybody ever have a, a, a real father? A genuine father that, that required obedience from his children, sons and daughters? That's the same thing with our Godfather. Our Father, the, the God of all flesh. Our Father, the Almighty God, requires obedience from his children. The wrath of God abides on the children of dis obedience, not obedience. That's why if you've ever been disobedient, a spirit, you can feel it in your body, in disobedience, when you're walking in disobedience. It's a trembling. It's a fear. But the fear of God is clean. There is no, no fear of trembling when you're walking in the fear of the Lord. In the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it's clean and it endures forever. And Noah went in, and the sons and his wife and the sons' wives went him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Because of the waters of the flood. In the 600th year of his life, in the second month, the 17th day, the same day was the flood, the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were open. And the rain was upon earth forty days and four nights. In the selfsame day, Noah entered with his sons and his wives into the ark. The same day that the the rain started to fall, not seven days before that, as was taught. Oh yeah, Noah was sitting in the ark for seven days. No, that ain't what the Bible says. So the self-same day that the flood and the rains came upon the earth, Noah entered into, and the self-same day entered Noah. I think it's very clear. 
Another one of those perversions, though, try and make the Word of God more of a fact than it is already. Just like Jesus when he had... You'll hear this story probably coming up here soon. Passover's coming up. Oh, Jesus heard Thomas say, unless I could put my finger in the print of the nails of his hands and thrust my head on the side, I would not believe in. Oh, Jesus heard that, and he turned around and had to go back for Thomas. Well, he must have went on a long walking hike because it was eight days later that Jesus returned. He left the disciples eight days with Thomas, battering him with doubt and unbelief. About really, did the Lord really rise from the dead? That's another one of those twisted scriptures again. Well, that's all right. God, every time I seen these things, a flag would go up and say, "What in the world's going on here? This ain't the truth. That ain't the truth. That ain't what the Bible. That ain't what the Word of God says." Hey, if the Spirit don't line up with the Word, then the Spirit is from hell. Period. From the imagination of a, one's own heart. Now here's the scripture. Remember I said grace? God dropped it in my spirit boy and I just started crying with, with joy because he would he would do these things. Show me about the grace of God and how people have turned into lasciviousness and how people have failed of the grace of God. How people have frustrated the grace of God. Listen to the scripture now, saints. Never knew it was in the Bible till yesterday, even though God put it in my heart last week that grace was given for obedience. Praise your name, Father. Listen to this. Romans chapter 1, verse 5. By whom we have received grace and apostleship. Next words. For obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. What? By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith. Remember I said, God showed me that. You were saved by grace through faith. That's right. Grace is a teacher to get us through this time and to go on to sinless perfection. That's what grace is all about, for obedience. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are, and to whom you obey? Whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine that was delivered unto you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Thank you, Father. Because that's what grace does. Hey, we can boldly come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in this present evil world. And the grace of God that comes to help us is the grace of God that teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Not to use spiritual discernment to take advantage and abuse people or to abuse your own selves with covetousness which is idolatry or worshiping of oneself. Everybody, all the saints, are tried every day by the temptations of the flesh. Period. But the whole point of that is, and I'll get to the scripture that, that, that talks about the temptations in this present filthy flesh. Because the Bible says to cleanse yourselves from all the filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Praise God. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as you have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. There's no sin in holiness. I've always preached that. I've been a preacher of holiness for ever since I be, God had me began preaching back in 2003. 15 years ago. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had you then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? See, what fruit have you then? See, that's really Kirk is talking about the fruitless professor. Even John Bunyan talked about the fruitless professor. 
But now you may, now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus the Christ our Lord. Thank you, Father. Who in the days of his flesh, I often quoted this. Why? Hey, none of us yet have strived against sin on the blood, like Paul talked about. But Jesus did, and he gave us an example that we should follow in his steps. Who knew no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he reviled not again. And when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed all things unto him that judges righteously. He didn't go out and hire a lawyer. I told you, man, lawyers are of this world. Period. God, Jesus said, I will give you a mouth and wisdom in the time that you go before your magistrates and governors. I don't recall a lawyer standing next to Jesus when he was before Pilate and Herod. How about Paul when he said, bonds and imprisonments await me in every city? I guess he wanted to go hide in somebody's house when he thought they were coming to arrest him. <laughs> no, the only time Paul hid in a basket was when the Jews wanted to kill him. Not when the authorities came. When the authorities came for him, he, was, he would gladly say, Hey, let me speak for myself, Felix. King Agrippa, thank you that I could speak. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and in tears unto him, that was able to save him from death and was heard, and that he feared. That was when he sweat the great drops of blood. And what happened at that point was an angel came and ministered unto him and gave him the strength to go on to perfection against sin, striving against sin. Because after the angel strengthened him, then he went in great agony and sweat great drops of blood. But it was only until that angel strengthened him. That's like one time I remember when uh, uh, someone was talking about how they were making a move on Sister Mary Bonner there on the farm. Actually, it was Ralph. I don't need to go around it anymore. He was making a move on Sister Mary Bonner. He said, man, he said, all the years I was trying to do it, Finally, I had my opportunity to make the move, and who was there? Me. So Brother Stan was standing there, right there in the way when I was ready to make the move, and he knew he had it. I had that move that day. But nope, God chose this man of God, the angel of the Lord, standing there, forbidding the madness of the prophet. Praise God. Don't, hey, after that scripture I talked about where he, he uh, offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears on him that was able to save him from death. It was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things he suffered. That's how we all learn obedience. Because when you commit sin, you suffer. And then you learn obedience. Jesus was chastised without sin. And he learned obedience by the things he suffered. Yet learned he obedience by things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he was made perfect, became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Remember, the Lord has come back in flaming fire, taking vengeance on all them that know not God and obey not the gospel of grace. Period. Then Peter and the other apostles answered, we ought to obey God rather than men. And that's how my messages have always been. To obey God rather than any man. Even this man. A lot of times I don't even want to say nothing and God will overwhelm me. Like fire shut up in my bones. He would just overwhelm me and say, you got to talk. You, you need to speak. To deliver my soul. I'm not going to hide this talent in the earth. That God gave me. Actually, whatever. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are as witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Ghost. We are this is we are his witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey him. That's where the Holy Ghost comes in, in obedience, not in disobedience.
Thank you, Father. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Forty years was I grieved with this generation, he said. That's, he's still grieved with this generation. Forty years. He's been grieved with it. Now these were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. How many times have I seen that on the farm? The brothers sent out to do jobs all together, and then there'd be some rising up, a rose, hey, how about that word? They rose up and played. Hmm? God is very direct with his words. They rose up and played after they ate and drank. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day, 20 and 3,000. Huh? There ain't no, no problem with sexual sins, though. That was spiritual. Yeah? Well, the spirit, the body is controlled by the spirit. And the body, any sin is, is committed is committed through the actions of the Spirit. Just like Jesus said, out of the heart proceed adulteries and fornicate out of the heart, not the flesh, out of the heart. And then the flesh reacts to what's in your heart and coming out of your heart. These defile the man, not the flesh. The flesh is already defiled. But we are to go on to perfection, saints, and cleanse ourselves from all the filthiness of the flesh and spirit. God, the Holy Spirit, will lead and guide you into all truth. And he will show you anywhere you come short of the glory of God. Period. Just like he does with me all the time. I always seek God all the time. Seek the Lord with all thine heart. Seek God. They that seek the Lord shall understand all things, not just some. So continue to seek God, saints. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed as serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happen for examples. And they are written for our admonition or warning upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let him that thinketh he stand take heed lest he fall. I mentioned that last time. That's why I always take heed to the way I talk. Take heed to the way I live. Take heed to the Holy Ghost. Take heed thinking I'm standing when I'm not, lest I fall. That's a good admonition. And then there was another one. Okay. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. But there has no temptation taken you or me, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. You know, we serve a faithful God. Not one that's going to let you continually fall on your temptation unless you've been given over to a reprobate mind. That's what a reprobate mind and a reprobate spirit will do. God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that temptation that you may be able to bear it. Meaning bear the temptation but escape it. Not give in or commit to it. To let lust conceive where it brings forth sin. Wherefore my dear beloved plea idolatry I speak as to wise men. Judge ye what I say. You know Jesus closing out this message here about grace given for obedience Jesus, the, the scripture clearly says let this mind be in you which is also in our Lord Christ Jesus who in being the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation oh you gotta stop talking about it. you can't talk like that on the air about me and Rose, people out there trust me, my reputation huh <laughs> He made of himself no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man here is that grace given for obedience and Jesus he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross 
But he humbled himself and became obedient. Obedience takes humility. Acknowledging where our shortcomings are. Humility in acknowledging our weaknesses in our spirit and in our flesh. And in God, who is faithful, will make a way of escape for every one of us to deliver us from this present and evil world in this flesh, in this life. By living a life of holiness and true, ho true holiness. That's like Samuel said. Has the Lord great delight in burnt offerings or sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Or in contrary to it? Or in place of obeying God? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken better than the fat of our lambs. Thank you, Jesus. That's why it's so important to be obedient to the faith. Faith comes by the hearing of the word of God, that we can walk in true holiness. Jesus is his name. Thou shalt call him Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sins, not in them. I've always seen that scripture like that, and that's the way God showed me it. From their sins, not in them. Such were some of you. But now you are clean through the word. That's right, you hear the word of God. You commit a sin? Any sin? You're faithful? To go to God and ask for forgiveness and ask Him to cleanse you from all the filthiness of the flesh and spirit? God, who is faithful, will do it. He's not going to leave you in your filthiness and sin. The, the, grace is a teacher and an instructor in righteousness to lead us and guide us into the divine nature of God itself. Period. So saints, I just pray that you'll be encouraged. Continue to strive against sin. On to blood. Jesus left us an example that we should follow in his steps. Anytime anybody comes short, call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to deliver you. And he is faithful and just to deliver us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and sin. Just like you said in Hebrews, my new covenant. It, your sins and iniquities I will remember no more. Like Peter said to the Jews, unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus the Christ, sent him to bless you. How? By turning away every one of you from your iniquities. So that means if, if, if that's what Jesus was sent to do, he is going to accomplish it. He is going to accomplish his word by turning us away from our iniquities. Not living in them. Not continuing in them. Continuing in sin that God, grace should abound. God forbid. And I ask you again, Father, bring that word to pass, Lord. God forbid. Really bring that to the forefront in all the saints' lives, in hearts, in minds, in spirit. God forbid that we should continue in any sin, but that we should strive to keep ourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Saints, I bless you again this day with this message. Grace for obedience. May God bless that to your very heart. In Jesus' name, I pray that he will accomplish it. Amen.